Good evening everybody and thank you so much for joining us for our latest webinar where we are really excited to introduce you to some of the Spanish delights and Portuguese highlights that we have got on our website. My name is Sarah Turner, I work in the marketing department here at Railbookers and I am here with my colleague, our senior travel consultant, Gareth Jones, who is very, very much looking forward to chatting with you about some of these itineraries. Yeah. As you can see on your screen, one lucky person today will win £50 off their next rail holiday with us, so definitely worth sticking around until the end and seeing if you could be our lucky winner. And of course, everybody is going to be entitled to exclusive attendee discounts. Before I hand over to my colleague Gareth, I would just like to take a few moments to chat with you a bit about Railbookers. Obviously, you guys know, I hope, that we are the rail experts. We have got such a fantastic team in our London office here. And we really do love to chat with you guys about your rail holidays and put together the best routes and the best trips for you. And we use our insider access to make sure that you're getting the best value. We have access to fares and availability that aren't accessible to the public and really close relationships with all the hotels and the rail companies that we work with. And what we aim to do is make your holidays completely flexible, so there's no escorted tours, there's no set departure dates or times, you can go whenever you like, you can go wherever you like. We're aiming to make it completely hassle free because we know how complicated it can be. So many systems and languages, etc, etc, so that's where we step in, just give us a call and let us organise everything for you. And, of course, we are very, very proud to have won many industry awards and many consumer awards as well. It's a real testament to, to all the hard work that we do here. You know by now who we are. We are Railbookers, and we specialise in holidays to Europe, to the USA, Canada, and much, much more far beyond those as well, of course. We can organise loads of different types of holidays, from scenic rail journeys, if you're taking the train to kind of make the most of the scenery, city breaks, if you just want a short hop somewhere quick for the weekend maybe. Luxury and private train journeys are always holidays that we love putting together. Maybe the Venice Sample Orient Express or the Rocky Mountaineer, those amazing bucket list special occasion journeys. Rail and sail, we are doing more and more and more of. We're seeing a huge increase in popularity of combining your trip by train with a cruise. Lakes and Mountains are you know, just a kind of example of the amazing scenery that you can see from the sides of the tracks. Maybe Austria or Switzerland and coast to coast USA and Canada. You know, amazing sort of bucket list, as I said before, itineraries by rail. We'll chat to you a little bit more at the end of the presentation about some of our top sellers and our top destinations. You can get a little taster here of some of the places that our customers love the most from Scandinavia, Italy, Switzerland, of course, Spain and Portugal, which we're very much looking forward to talking with you guys about today. A few of our top itineraries, you can see multi-city breaks if you want to sort of explore more than one capital city on your holiday, Scandinavian Grand Tour, very, very popular at the moment, and I'm sure you're really looking forward to hearing about Madrid and Andalusia, I know that's one of the itineraries that Gareth is going to talk with you about this evening. Italian Lakes by the Alps and the Polish Explorers, some more European itineraries that are just wonderful journeys to do by rail, really make the most of the scenery and the, the amazing kind of vistas, bus side tracks in Europe and Canada coast to coast. What an epic journey, you know, thousands of miles and really, really the only way to get from coast to coast, going right through the heart of Canada, is to do it by train. Brilliant, well, I'm just about ready to hand over. If you guys have any questions at all, pop them in at the question box, which should be to the right of your screen. We do get loads and loads of questions, so if we don't quite get round to answering yours, I'm very, very sorry, but we will certainly be in touch after the webinar to answer any questions that you might have. 
Without much further ado, I'm going to pass you over to my colleague Gareth Jones, our senior travel consultant, uh, who's been with the company for almost a decade now and who knows all these routes like the back of his hand. He really doesn't like that picture, so he's giving me a funny look right now, <laughs> but he will do a fantastic job of explaining all these itineraries to you. Thanks very much, Sarah. Yeah, and thanks for the photo. It's, um, yeah, 10 years younger, a lot less hair now and a bit uglier, to be honest with you as well. But thanks very much. Um, yes, Spain and all things Spanish and the Iberian Peninsula are on now. Um, the first itinerary I'm going to discuss with you is probably my favourite. It's Madrid and Andalusia. Uh, notice the th. Um, it really is fantastic. Madrid is one of the great cities of the world. Um, obviously, it's the, the capital of Spain, the centre of the great Spanish empire from medieval times and bygone it's full of huge old historic buildings and spaces such as the Puerta del Sol, Plaza Mayor and the Royal Palace. Now very cosmopolitan full of arts, fashions, restaurants and um, the metro is really really easy to use to get around it's got English and Spanish uh, signings and the Museo del Prado is up there with the National Portrait Gallery and the Louvre in Paris in terms of one of the best art collections in the world. Um, there's a particular hotel there I stayed in when I went a few years ago now at the Hospes which is a really good hotel chain throughout Spain and it is by far the best tapas I've ever had. Um, uh, tapas is the way to go. Um, the best place is if you order a drink they'll just give you some tapas to go along with it and I said that's generally the best way in Spain. Um, a couple of nights there, leaving Spain, leaving Madrid. Sorry, uh, you make your way to a Tocha station. Now it's worth getting there a good half an hour or so before your train departs. It's pretty spectacular, really. It's one of the best stations in the world, I'd say. The palm trees actually inside the station, quite a big uh, kind of shopping area as well. But there's even a pond with full of full of turtles, uh, which is uh, obviously quite a spectacle. Um, also, the trains in Spain, they have do kind of scan your luggage via an X-ray scanner, so do make sure you give yourself plenty of time before the departure time of the train. Um, the next stop on this itinerary is the historic city of Granada, um, one of the most popular destinations in Spain. As you see there, and I'm sure you're all quite familiar with the Alhambra Palace, but it really is an amazing um, structure, well not structure really, it's a huge great palace of hundreds of buildings and things but it's incredibly grand and so well preserved from the Moorish Empire who took over uh, the, the Andalusia area in the 8th century. Really amazing history, they encouraged sort of very good multicultural society, there's quite a big Jewish population who lived alongside the uh, Islamic population of the city for thousands, well hundreds of years. Um, as you see in the image on the left hand side there you can see the Sierra Nevada mountains in the background which kind of helped to give Granada quite a cool climate all year round and um, around about four or five months a year those mountains will be covered in snow as well you can actually go skiing believe it or not out there so one thing you never really think about in Spain is the, the opportunity to go skiing. The next stop is Cordoba uh, which isn't too far from Granada at all um, Cordoba actually used to be the capital of the Arab state of Al-Andalus. Um, again, it's very similar in terms of the architecture there, with lots of small streets and alleyways surrounding the historic Mesquita, um, which I think the, the actual kind of tower on the right-hand side is part of the Mesquita complex, and it's the main building on the left-hand side. It's a bit like the Hagia Sophia in Istanbul, I always think. It's sort of an old... Um, What's the word? An old mosque, sorry, that's been converted into Christianity, into a cathedral through Christianity. So just thousands of years history all there in front of you, really well preserved. Um, it really is beautiful, it's beautiful. Now the next train journey on to Seville is via the high speed Ave service. Um, it's one of, the, one of the best train services in Europe. Uh, really is fantastic. It's more. It's the closest to the famous Japanese bullet train. I think you can get with a funny kind of duck-shaped front on it. But really, really clean. Very modern. Very quick. As I said, all the all the uh, announcements are both in Spanish and English on board. Uh, if you do upgrade to Preferente, which is the first class there, you will get a small meal served on board as well. It's really great service. But as I said it's only a 30-minute journey onto Seville. Seville is now the modern day capital of Andalusia and is a very historic inland port. Um, very much like Madrid, the uh, Spanish Empire during the medieval times and their 
exploitations of the Americas saw huge growth in the city of Seville with amazing big buildings and heightened population. It's a much warmer climate than we saw in Granada, very easy to navigate, especially if you've got a Seville card which gives you uh, unlimited admis 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 administration, admission. Excuse me, I'm going to get tongue tied here. Into some of the great places like the cathedral, which was once the third largest church in the world, just behind St. Paul's in London and St. Peter's in Rome. Uh, it's also the resting place of Christopher Columbus, so that's the sort of history this beautiful city has. Uh, La Giralda and La Real Alcazar also beautifully, um, beautiful examples of the Moorish influences around there. And again, there's a really beautiful Jewish quarter surrounding that. After a couple of nights stay there, again you jump on the wonderful Ave service, a bit of a longer journey back to Madrid now, just three hours, but as, much, as comfortable as a train journey could be, and that's where you fly back to the UK. So just to outline that, you've got seven nights in total, hotel accommodation including breakfast, with we'll return flights to and from Madrid. Um, we could do that from any UK airport as well, not just London, and then as I said, rail travel on the high-speed Ave services between the cities. Now don't forget here that railbookers work completely on a custom make basis so if you wanted to take the train out there and the train back we can certainly kind of take care of that for you. Um, you could take some sort of influences from this next itinerary which is Barcelona via Montpellier. As you can see this certainly starts in London with a train over to Lille, northern France, just a short two hour journey. Uh, really pretty little place, quite underrated often. Um, but yeah, some really good restaurants, again, a really budding art scene. Uh, really nice place just for a ni nice one-night stay. Also frees up the day in London, so it means you don't have to get an early morning start or anything. You can just go over in the afternoon for a, an evening. The following morning, take one of the great TGV services down to the south coast of France, Montpellier. Um, it's now the capital of the region. Started off as a very kind of old, small fishing town and grew into the capital. Here, hopefully, you get some great Mediterranean sunshine, but some of the best seafood in town as well. And again, it's just one night here before the following day you jump on the cross-border train into Spain and onto Barcelona, the capital of Catalonia. Um, I really think Barcelona's up there. It's one of those destinations just got something for everybody. It's you know you can't turn your nose up at Barcelona. Um, I think it saw a lot of investment for the Olympics in 1992, which really turned it around as a destination. Um, you can see that around the beach and the seafront area, but the kind of Gothic quarter around us, Ramblas, has stayed very much the same as it had them for years and years and years, and is, again, it's full of some great bars and restaurants. Um, and you see the photos there, there's the famous outline of the Sagrada Familia, um, famously incomplete but I have heard on the grapevine that they're hoping to actually finish it within the next 15 years. Uh, I'd be surprised if they do the amount of detail there. It's absolutely amazing, amazing architecture. And you see on the left there just a picture of the Park Guell. Uh, this guy Gaudi, you really see his influences across the country, not just in little places here, but so many of the buildings show his kind of quirky bohemian style with all the mosaics and things. Really, really glorious stuff that you just don't see anywhere else in the world. It really is sort of Barcelona's identity and it's gorgeous. So that particular package ends with three nights in Barcelona and then a flight back, but again that can be kind of structured to if you wanted to take the train back or head on to Italy, then head on to Spain, forgive me. There's a great train link from Barcelona up to Madrid uh, and onwards to other cities in Spain. Now this itinerary, is, as you can see, is going a bit further west on the Iberian Peninsula, so heading out to Portugal. Um, again, just because of the, the long distance out there, we do start and end it with a flight into Porto and then fly back from Lisbon. Um, again, from any UK airport. Porto itself is actually a UNESCO World Heritage Site, the whole city. Um, as you can see there, really vibrant down on the the picture on the left hand side which is the actual kind of Riviera air of the city which is right on the banks of the Douro River. Um, one really nice thing to do actually there is take a day trip on the Douro River. We can kind of help with a, a, a trip on the river, on a river on a boat which is beautiful scenery but 
The train journey as well, there's a train that runs along there which is very, very beautiful, but sadly it's a regional train which you can only purchase tickets for locally. Either way, hopefully you get to enjoy a, a glass of the, the best port in the world, probably, I'd say, in Porto. After then, it's just a short hop to Coimbra. I think it's around about an hour and a half on the train. Um, Coimbra is world famous for its ancient university, one of the oldest operating universities in the world. Actually been uh, centre of learning since 1290, believe it or not. I think one of the main uh, sites there as well is actually the library there, which I've seen photos of myself, and I think it's been in quite a few films as well, but it's amazing, this amazing decorative centre of learning that sadly they just seem to have disappeared throughout the world now. Certainly my university, the library, wasn't the most inspiring place, but it's really one a sight to behold, Coimbra Library. Absolutely gorgeous, and such a huge collection of ancient books. Um, really worth a trip. And then on to Lisbon, one of the oldest cities in the world and geographically the furthest West Europe reaches, often seen as the end of, end of Europe, uh, steeped in colonial history and riches reaching back to Roman times. Again, a really great art centre. You see all the colourful buildings there. It's a very vibrant city. Um, easy to get around with those kind of historic trams that run loads of routes around and just fantastic cuisine really great food fresh seafood and the custard tarts in Lisbon are just a taste to behold I've tried them many other places but you just can't get that taste anywhere else but Lisbon <laughs> really really tasty stuff so there we go I said seven nights hotel stay in total uh, flights from London to Porto and Lisbon back to you back to the UK again and rail travel between the cities, including reservations. The trains in Portugal really good, great clean trains, as they should be really. But this final itinerary I'd like to have a look at with you. We've only actually had on the website for two years, I think now, and it's I've not seen any other sort of holiday package anywhere that shines a light on this sort of area of Spain, which is often overlooked. Galicia and Porto. Now this one again starts with a flight, it's a flight into La Coruña. <coughs> the great place, the great thing about this place, sorry, and the airport is that it's really close to the city centre, so you transfer into the city, it's not huge distances at all, really very easy. Uh, as you can see there, the image on the left hand side, beautiful blue sea on the uh, Bay of Biscay, I think it is, or out into the Atlantic. Uh, beautiful beachside setting, really vibrant city. And the skyline is dominated by the huge Roman lighthouse called the Hercules Tower you see there. It's pretty spectacular if you think that's from Roman times. After a couple of nights there, you do jump on the train to Santiago de Compostela, actually the capital of Galicia, and again a world heritage site. Here it's dominated by the ancient cathedral and the shrine of St. James. Um, it is, of course, the historic end of the Way of St. James, the pilgrimage dating back to the 9th century uh, people walking across the whole length of Spain, four days pilgrimage to get there. Um, again, it's a beautiful town, as you see, uh, riverside setting, uh, beautiful climate, really, really untouched kind of architecture and untouched scenery around there. It's gorgeous. Now we'll take the train across to Pontevedra. As you see there, it's quite a relaxed place. Um, quite a quaint small city, which is actually one international awards for its urban quality. I don't really see much kind of urbanization to be honest with you and not the photo, all the other photos that I've seen there but a really nice place just to unwind. It's a very much a sort of a train paced holiday um, just chilling out. Lovely fishing village, great fresh seafood. On to Vigo actually the most populated city in Galicia but you wouldn't know it. it's quite spread out there's no sort of high-rise city center or anything um, there is actually kind of, it's kind of some of the old ancient city walls are still partially preserved from their glory days and protecting the city from rampaging Vikings and our very own Francis Drake really huge kind of seafaring history to Vigo um, and then finally head down to Porto again as said there you've got the beautiful Domo Valley, um, wonderful food, 
really easy to navigate, a great kind of manageable size destination. Uh, you don't have to worry about jumping on the underground or anything like that, everything's within easy reach. City centre hotel making life easy for you as well. So there we go, that's eight nights in total, uh, including breakfast at the hotels, flights out from London to La Coruña and Porto back to the UK and rail travel between the destinations as well. Well, I hope you found that interesting. Thanks very much for sticking with me and I'll hand back to Sarah now. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Gareth. I hope all of you will agree that it was really, really brilliant to get some proper inspiration on the amazing destinations in Spain and Portugal, especially with, obviously, everybody's looking to be booking their summer holidays at the moment with the really grey and dreary weather outside. It's dark already. I would not mind a bit of Spanish sunshine in my life right now at all. So, if you'll allow me, I'd just like to chat a little bit more about a couple of our top destinations, just to try and give you even more inspiration for your next trip, whether that be in the USA, Canada, Europe, or anywhere else in the world that you would like to go by rail. <clears throat> a couple of different holiday types, of course, depending on the sort of holiday that you're looking for. Maybe you're looking for a journey across Europe really scenic journey with you know amazing lakes and mountain scenery Austria Switzerland Italy you know some fantastic vistas to behold in Europe when you travel by train perhaps you don't have quite as long you're just looking for a quick hop skip and a jump over to a city you've always wanted to visit or somewhere that you're longing to return city breaks by train are a great way to do to do that whether it's I mean even down to Barcelona as Gareth just said or maybe to Paris, anywhere in Germany, we can certainly arrange it for you. If you're planning a big special occasion holiday this year, consider a luxury or private rail journey, something like the Venice Sampon Orient Express or the Rocky Mountaineer, any one of those incredible luxurious journeys that really are just, just something that you have to do once in your life if you're able to, certainly. Rail and sail holidays, as I said before, are becoming more and more popular, combining an amazing journey by train with a cruise, just perfect for people who just like to relax. And coast to coast USA and Canada, really it should be on everybody's bucket list, though maybe I am biased, but certainly some epic and inspiring journeys across just changing landscapes. A couple of our top destinations here, old favourites like Italy and Switzerland that every train travel lover will uh, certainly certainly be uh, either have been to or be longing to go to. Scandinavia is really really up and coming for us. We're seeing loads of people wanting to explore the capital cities, also the fjords of Norway, things like that, which is a wonderful, wonderful uh, way to take a holiday. The USA, we're putting Canada in there as well. For long journeys, absolutely the coast-to-coast -coast trips, but the train's also a great way to maybe link the cities along the East Coast or take a journey next to the Pacific Ocean through California, something like that. So, one of our top holidays at the moment Berlin, Prague, Vienna and Budapest. I'm sure you can see from the just from the title of the holiday why it's so popular. Four amazing capital cities in one very, very easy holiday by rail. High speed trains through the continent linking these wonderful capitals. Uh, Berlin obviously, Taste of Germany, Prague in the Czech Republic, Vienna in Austria and Budapest in Hungary, the last uh, European city that I visited actually was Budapest and just couldn't believe how wonderful it was, the architecture, the food and just really friendly people and amazing views from so many different points. Scandinavian Grand Tour, there really is no other way to explore Scandinavia other than by train. The tracks go through some amazing rural Scandinavian countryside between these destinations. You'll get to take the, one of the, Europe's last boat ferries over from Germany to Denmark, which is an experience in itself, certainly when I did it. And you'll get to combine the, the big cities, the Copenhagen, Stockholm and Oslo, with a, with a stay in Gothenburg, which is Sweden's second city, but really chilled out, nice harbourside town with, uh, with just so many Michelin-starred restaurants and quirky things to do, so very highly recommended. 
Canada coast to coast potentially needs no introduction but I'm going to try and do it justice uh, on the webinar today spend a bit of time over in the east fly into Halifax some time in the French speaking regions to soak up all that amazing history and culture we're going to take you on a trip to Niagara Falls from Toronto because that's an absolute must do to see those amazing waterfalls and then in my opinion the really exciting bit three epic nights across Canada as you travel from east to west and you'll see pretty much every type of scenery imaginable from dense forestry, wonderful expansive prairie flats and the amazing Rocky Mountains as you approach Jasper. Trip to Banff National Park, I mean that's, you look at the picture there to the left, just you know some amazing, some of the most amazing scenery in the whole of the world really and end the journey in Vancouver, really nice chilled out kind of coastal city with plenty to see and do and really nice mix of very urban and cosmopolitan with very relaxed and one more for all of you history buffs or culture vultures uh, the polish explorer visiting five amazing polish cities linking them with first class really lovely trains through the countryside so you'll get such a taste of the way of life in different places in poland We'll fly in and out of Warsaw, but obviously if you'd rather take the train out, then that is no problem whatsoever. You can spend a couple of nights en route, perhaps, and really go through the heart of Europe on your way. Spend time in Warsaw, Gdansk, Poznan, Wrocław, and end your journey in Krakow, an amazing sort of city for history and culture, before flying home or maybe taking a different route back by train. Whatever you like to do, obviously, we can completely customise, tailor-make, every journey is as individual as you guys are okay well that's quite enough from me i'm sure you will agree we're really excited to announce our winner for this webinar uh, which is sylvia and we will be in touch with you after the webinar with all the details of that and you'll get 50 pounds of your next rail holiday with us maybe that's one of the amazing spanish portuguese journeys that gareth has uh, spoken to you about today or maybe it's something completely different it's up to you <clears throat> and absolutely everybody is going to get 25 pounds person off their next holiday sylvia you can use this as well to combine the offers you just use that promo code when you call us and book your trip before the 28th of february and how do you book? It's a great question. You can give us a ring on 0203-780-2382. We're open Monday to Friday from 9 o'clock in the morning all the way through till 8pm in the evenings. And we're open on Fridays from 9 o'clock until half past 5. Just leave that up a bit longer if you need to grab a pen and paper, jot the number down give us a ring our guys are really looking forward to chatting with you about your next holiday and that's it from me thank you very very much we've had so many questions come through uh, that we're very much looking forward to uh, to answering i'm just sorry we won't be able to get around to all of them today because there are just so many but we will give it a good go to get as met through as many as possible uh, gareth maybe you can can field these ones so we've got a question from marie who would like to know, she wants to do the Madrid and Andalusia package that you spoke about today, but she also wants to go to Barcelona. Can she add it on? Good question, Marie. Absolutely, yeah. Um, hopefully I'll get my words together properly this time. Um, there is a direct TGV train, a high-speed French train from Paris to Barcelona, which works really well. So you can kind of um, get on to London at 9 o'clock in the morning, be in Barcelona for half past 8 that evening from Barcelona, there's a great high-speed Ave line up to Madrid, even across to Seville, uh, Malaga. So you can really get from Barcelona and join on to any itinerary there, really. Absolutely, yeah, it's a great way to travel. Um, give yourself a couple of hours in Paris, perhaps. Have some lunch at the Trem Bleu restaurant in Gare de Lyon. But yeah, easily done. Easily done. Just ask any of my colleagues. Absolutely, fantastic. Yeah, and definitely recommend the, uh, the Trem Bleu restaurant in Gare de Lyon if you've got a bit of time. It is... Uh, taste for the eyes as well as for the taste buds i don't know it's very very nice yeah. tasty absolutely okay we've got another question from we'll have one from greg who is looking to visit um 
Spain and Portugal. He says, is the sleeper train from Madrid to Lisbon still running? And can he add it into our, one of our packages? Certainly, Greg. Yep, it's, um, it's probably the most direct route from Spain into Portugal. Sadly, strangely enough, such a big border between the two countries, there's only two real train crossings. Um, the train hotel uh, starts actually from the French-Spanish border and runs through Madrid into Lisbon. Um, really great train. Uh, you can get grand class cabins on board with ensuite facilities and things. Sadly, they did close the restaurant service on board about a year ago now, so make sure you take some provisions on with you. Um, but yeah, that's certainly still running. Uh, the second route I mentioned is the um, route through Galicia, which we looked at in the packet before. And sadly, there is no other route, no other rail route across the border. Absolutely, yeah. Spot on. Right, brilliant. And we've got a question from Carol. This is a good question. I'll pick this one because I think it might help uh, a, lot, a lot of people out. This is a question we get all the time. She's saying, when is the best time to book? I think she wants to go on a summer holiday. Oh, uh, good question, Carol. Yeah, I mean, it's... It sounds, you know, it's uh, the old adage, get in there early, basically. It's never too early to book. Um, hotels, flights always available a year or so in advance, you know, so it's always worth getting there as early as, early as possible. That way you're going to get the best prices. Travelling by train or any sort of holiday package, really, the closer to departure you book, the higher the price of the things that are left, really, the fewer seats available on the train, etc. So it really is a case of getting there as early as possible. Um, it'll just probably be around about a £250 deposit for a good package like the ones we've looked at today. And then the balance for your trip wouldn't actually be due until three months before. So it's a case of, as I said, get in there early. Absolutely. Well, guys, that's probably all we've got time for today. We've just taken up enough of your time, I'm sure. Um, but that's been absolutely great to, to talk to you about these Spanish and Portuguese journeys that we've got. Obviously, there are loads more on our website. If you just like to make a quick visit there, then we'll, we'll be able to see all of the different things that we offer. And always remember that we can tailor make anything that you like. If you want to adjust our, if you want to adjust any of our holidays to your exact specifications. Thank you very much for joining us, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.